My name is Detective Chief Inspector Lloyd. I'm 39 years old, and I've been in the police force almost 20 years. Most of it, no, all of it, dealing with serious crime. I'm good at what I do, and I really believe I can make a difference. <laughs> Oh, boss, this D.I. who's starting today. Judy Hill. Tell her I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Nervous about it, boss? The promotion board? <laughs> I'm good at what I do, and I really believe I can make a difference. It's long hours, um, plays hell with your home life, but I happen to like it. So why trade it for promotion to a rank where you'll spend your whole life fretting about overtime budgets and policy guidelines? It's a very good question, Ma. How's the animal? Very pleasant indeed. Thank you, David. Oh, it's all, sir. Look at her all tied up. Thanks, please. Wow, who's Thanks. that? Right back. Thank you. Thank you. Not bad. Not a patch in our calling, obviously. Natalie! Is that lipstick? Go on, get it off. You know the rules. Jealous old cow. He's getting nervous. So, nothing yet, Skip. Okay, stay sharp, everyone. Any minute now. And welcome back to a new term. I'd like to start by introducing a brand new member of staff, Mr. Patrick Murray, who will be teaching biology. Dear Spinch. It's a bloody hell. Dear Hill. Frank Henry's replacement. They told me I'd knob one. Thought I'd surprise you. Mr. 
Mrs. Cochran, have you got a minute? These violent delights have violent ends, and in their triumph die like fire and powder, which, as they kiss, consume. Therefore love moderately, long love doth so. Too swift arrives as tardy as too slow. It's beautiful, Natalie. Informant of yours. He's never let me down before, ma'am. Oh, come and forget the mom thing. Judy's fine. Tom. It's gonna be worth another half an hour. He's big time, this fella. He's got a production line going in there. Strips down the computer cells on the chips. Untraceable. Grand a pop. It's your call, Tom. Okay, this could be them. We've got a blue truck, no markings, two IC1 meals up front. Okay, go, go, go! Could you just stay where you are, please, gents? We're police officers. Do have any more in the van? No. Bob, let's have it open. Break it out. It's cats. Kittens. I'm choosing one. Open the box, will you? Van's empty, Skip. Right. Give me that here. Just checking. I'll put some holes in the box of our use. They can breathe. Patrick, did I hear you were a Hollyhurst? That's right, yeah. Very nice. Why'd you leave? Uh, I just fancied a change, you know. <laughs> you must be a glutton for punishment. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, so, so sorry. Do watch out, Natalie. No, no, that, that was my fault. No problem, sir. You want to watch that one? She's a bit of a handful. That's for the tip. Kim, uh, next week you should play Juliet. Colin. <laughs> For heaven's sake, just stop flirting and sit down. Excuse me. There was another one this morning. Just ignore it. You can't. You've got to do something. Why did we join you? Actually, I was just leaving. Dear. Trouble in paradise, Colin. Sorry. Your wifey giving you a hard time. Far from it. Mr. Murray, how are you settling in? Yeah, uh, good actually. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> At least the boss wasn't here to see it, I suppose. Do you think you'll get this promotion is up for? I could do with a few people like Lloydie up there. People who know the score. You think he's good then? Oh, yeah, he's bloody good. Probably won't be around for much longer. Of course, if he does get it, they'll probably send us some fast-track tosser with a degree in sociology instead. <laughs> so, how'd it go with the promotion board? The old jungle drums are being busy, then. Don't blame people for being interested. Well, just between you, me, and the rest of the world, George, not too good. I found my hands-on experience as SIO impressive, but um, my management theory, quote, somewhat lacking. I can't see Lloyd in a test job. Well, do you know him? Worked together for a while. Dump him like that. I think you ought to at least say something. I did. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's nice. Great. He's all yours. Why, though? 
A pot of no, don't you understand? I want a man, not a boy, who thinks he can. <laughs> I'm going to Grand's off. Are you coming? Mom said be home by 10. Mom always says be home by 10. Anyway, um, I can't. I just remembered. I've got a date. Ooh! Yeah, right. Yeah, I have, in fact. Oh, see yourself, little sister! <laughs> oh, my God. It's <laughs> Really? You can show it. Nothing, only, um, only I don't think I'll bother coming home before my run. We really need to talk about the letter. Yes, and I really need to run. I'll see you at home about 10 o'clock. You do what you bloody well like. the day. <laughs> Who win? DS. What's the boss like? Haven't met him yet. Gazing at yourself? No. Just never very sure of myself in this. You should be. We're gonna like it here, Jude. Good feeling. Remind me who's come as this thing tonight. Oh, taxi. Oh. You get called away tonight, and I am going to flirt with other women. Yeah, not one of them would tell you your flies were undone. Oh. You're all right, though, aren't you? About the move and everything. Yes, I've told you. Good. Because I don't want you to resent it, being here. I don't. Come on. This is a surprise.
you go. Hey, you, I know you. You're at Oak Cross. So? What do you think you're doing? Mind your own business, you old bag. Sherry! Sherry, come here, damn you! Linda, oh, we can't hello, Mr. Sasminski. Sorry, hang on a minute. <laughs> um, no, I left her at a grand at about to heal. Should you see a doctor for those? Oh, oh no. No. I must have fallen when I ran for the phone. Didn't even notice. All I could think of was that poor girl. Your dog found the body. But you told the constable here you saw the girl alive about 40 minutes earlier, is that right? Yes, down by the lane. I think she was waiting for someone. Did you see anyone else? No, I am. Um, no. I asked her what she was doing. 
I knew she was an Oak Cross pupil from the uniform, you see, and I worked there. I'm the school secretary. Do you know her name? Something but foreign sounding, I think. I can't quite remember. Okay, never mind. Um, what did she say? She, um, well, she told me to mind my own business. Something like that. She was rather rude, so I just took the dog on for her walk. Freddy! Hello, Lloyd. Lovely night for it. Do we have a name for her? Not yet, boss. All cross uniform, though. Ah, that's better. Time of death. As I say, it's a warm night. Within the last hour or so, anyhow. We've got a witness who saw a labor of a name, 40. D.A. Hill's just been talking to her. Sir. Right, what have we got here? I think we can be pretty definite about cause of death. Strangulation by ligature. Specifically, a pair of navy blue tights. Was she raped, Freddy? If so, she doesn't seem to have put up much of a resistance. Not necessarily significant, though, is it? A lot of rape victims just freeze. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were a qualified pathologist. What, are you saying the sex was consensual? Possible. I couldn't commit myself in mixed company at this stage. Uh, look, there's no smoke in here, Doctor. What is that smell? Sort of perfume. Deodorant. Not the sort of thing a young girl would use. Ah, well, now. That is definitely more your area of expertise than mine. Leave it out, Freddy. Sir, a Mrs. Aspensky's reported her daughter missing. Natalie, age 15, people at Oak Cross. And I think we may have found her shoes. Tom. D.I. Hill, would you take the witness home? And get a statement? Yes, sir. Tucker's Lane, sir. Well, that's not what the locals call it. It's popular with the steamed-up windscreen brigade. So our witness says she saw the girl waiting here. Uh-huh. There we go. They like this when you found them? Yes, sir. Well, nothing's been touched. Well, could he have killed her down here and then shifted the body? It's unlikely. Yeah, but I mean... Now, why would anyone want to move her shoes? Impressive. Yours? My husband's. You're not from round here, then? Colin's quite the local hero. Been to the Olympics and everything. Erica? I was worried. Where were you? I took Sherry for a walk up on the green. Thought I'd meet you coming back. What, what happened? God, have you been mugged? Your wife's had a nasty shock, sir. Excuse me, what's that smell? What? Is it some sort of deodorant? Look, what's going on? I found a body, Colin. One of the Year 11 girls. The one with a Russian-sounding name. Uspensky. Natalie Uspensky. You know her? Yes, of course. She's in my English class. I, I don't believe it. Mr. Ospensky? Alice? Oh, my God. It's our Natalie, isn't it? May we come in, please? So you left your run at seven and got home about 20 minutes ago? That's right. Excuse me, Mr. Cochrane, but do you normally run for over three hours? Well, that depends. On what? On my schedule. I'm a serious athlete. I have a carefully worked out training schedule and it's rather important that I stick to it. But normally you'd come home across the green? Normally, yes. But as I explained, tonight I had to go back to the school to pick up the car. Because it wouldn't start earlier? <clears throat> right again. But I asked a friend to look at it for me and he's obviously fixed it. We're all clear now. 
Oh, stop it, Colin. <clears throat> Excuse me. What's wrong with you? Switched it off. I'll go and get some bags. Mr. Cochrane! Do you normally put your running shoes in the washing machine? He never uses the damn thing. I'm amazed he even knows how to turn it on. Are these the clothes you were wearing tonight? Yes. Right, with your permission, I'd like to take them away for testing. What if I don't give you my permission? I'll leave the cuspa here and go and get a warrant. It's your choice. Who's this? Erica. Hey! 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 Leave me alone! I'm really sorry. She's obviously upset. I can see that. We'll be in touch. What? We'll be in touch. She never listened. I warned her. Over and over. But oh, no. She was had to know best. Right. That's enough. So what are we talking about here, boyfriends? All she ever thought about. Um, hanging around these clubs. She was young. She just wanted a bit of fun out of life. Oh, and what would you know? She was mine too, wasn't she? Good as. You were her stepfather. Alice was already expecting when we married, but... I love that girl. <laughs> Whatever she says. At least I wasn't bloody nagging her all the time. No wonder she couldn't wait to get out of the house. Um, were there any boyfriends in particular? Um, Dave Britton was always hanging around. Why in a class? I gave up asking. I'm tired of hearing her lies. Oh, can't you just stop, woman? She's dead! Can't you just stop? Oh God, it hurts. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. LBC weather. Well, we're in for another glorious sunny day. Hardly any cloud and plenty of wind. And it's going to stay hot. The maximum today is 32 Celsius. That's nice. So, did you flirt with other women? Quite crazy. Nice will remain dry and muddy. Ooh. How about you? Murder. That's nice. Keep you busy. I met the DCI. Oh. More juice. It's just there. Too far. Michael, it's in front of you. What's he like? He doesn't need help with his orange juice, put it that way. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. I'm sorry, I'm just up late. I'm tired. Oh, sh oh God, the bath! <laughs> OK, our victim, Natalie Ospensky, age 15. Last night, somebody did this to her. She leaves her grandmother's flat at about 8.30, apparently intending on catching the bus home. It's only a 10-minute ride, but she never arrives. By 9.40, she's seen here on Tucker's Lane, possibly waiting for someone. And just after 10, she's here in the adventure playground dead. So, questions. Where was she between 8.30 and 9.40? Did she miss the bus? Did she meet someone? I don't think she was planning on meeting anyone. How come? Well, she had clothes and makeup and stuff at her grand's place, right? But she hadn't changed. She was still in her uniform. That's a good point. So maybe she was planning on going home, but something changed her mind. I expect my officers to be here on time. Yes. Sorry, sir. 
Right, moving on. Who was she waiting for? Boyfriend? Did they go to the adventure playground together? If so, they wouldn't have had long 15 minutes tops. So, what was this? A quickie that went wrong? Rape? What? And one final thing, and this could be really important. When she left her grandmother, she had a black school bag with her. It wasn't with the body. Why not? What happened to it? What about Cochrane, sir? What about him? Well, I definitely smelt his deodorant on the body. Plus, he knew the victim, and his account of his whereabouts is all over the place. It's hardly grounds for arrest, though, is it? Let's wait to see what the lab come up with on his clothes. Right, meanwhile, Trisha, working on sex offender files. Bob, liaison with crime scene. Tom, get uniform started on door to door. The rest of you get down to the school, talk to her friends. We need to know a hell of a lot more about this girl. Let's move. It's not like you to be late. Bathroom flood. You could have warned me. What do you mean? That you're working here. Well, I thought you knew. Well, I didn't. Not until it was too late. Well, what's that supposed to be? Got a couple of minutes. See you at the school. I've got three offers in there at the moment, on. I got divorced. I got married. Best laugh, but nothing ever scared her. She, she was always the first in our year to do everything. Plus, she looked older. She could get to clubs and that mask before anyone else. Boyfriends? Oh, yeah. She always had her pick. Well, when you say she changed... Were you and Natalie sleeping together? Come on, Dave, you're not in any trouble. But I have to believe you're telling me the truth. A few times, yeah. Were you in love with her? Gone home? Yeah, I suppose. Why? Why was it a secret? Come on, Kim. You may not believe it, but I was 15 once. I had a best friend. There wasn't anything she didn't know about me. Maybe the bloke was married. He was definitely older. Cos she said that if it ever got out, then he'd go to jail. She just said she didn't want to see him anymore. And then she, and she laughed, but it wasn't... It wasn't a nice laugh, not that she's laughing at you. That made you angry? Yeah, but... I never wanted to hurt her, if that's what you mean. It's OK, Dave. I believe you. OK, thanks. Thanks. The lab have found a letter in Cochrane's tracksuit. And? Well, it's unsigned, but it's obviously a love letter from a pupil arranging to meet on the green last night. A very good draw indeed for the Britain. Costa of Kenya in two. Collar of France, then Sabia of Italy. Jerzy of Poland, Werner of Germany, the German champion. Rodriguez of Brazil and Mills of the United States. What are you doing? I'm leaving. I'm going to the flat. Why? It's those letters, isn't it? It's those stupid letters. Now you listen. I swear on my life. You sad bastard! Do you still not get it? I saw you with her last night. I saw you. Mr. Cochrane, it's D.I. Hill. Could you open the door, please? Don't. No, please. Don't. Oh, no! Hey, hey! Hey, come here. 
Dr. Cochran. What's the rush? When I feel your hands on me, your beautiful, gentle hands, when I feel you inside me, I never wanted to stop. Just thinking about you, I feel like a wild animal in a cage. Well, it's a bit flowery, but I don't think there's much doubt about what she means. It's fantasy. Sorry, Colin, what was that? Well, it's just a schoolgirl's fantasy. They, they do think about sex all the time at that age. Well, you should know. I'll be waiting tonight in our special place on the green. Where was your special place, the playground? I've no idea. I've told you, it's all make-believe. Well, then why keep it? Well, I wasn't going to. I, mean, I, I meant to throw it away. I've, I've had other things on my mind. Such as? Was this the first letter? No. No, there were others, but this was the first one that talked about meeting. And that's why I decided not to run across the green, because, well, I knew she'd be there. Who? Natalie. So, you know it's Natalie? No. Well, no, I, well, I, I do now. I mean, it's obvious, but no, no, the letters were never signed. Why did you run away from us, Colin? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I just panicked, I suppose. What? <laughs> lovely, aren't you? Yes, you are. You're just a lovely girl. <laughs> Look, just what exactly are you looking for? Well, oh, what the hell? Just take whatever you want. Sherry. So, let me see if I've got this right. You ran down to the river, along the towpath to Cooper's Lock, and through the industrial estate, up the footpath, through the field, and back into town along the Byford Road. Yes. Wow. Quite a marathon. Thank you. What, nobody saw you all this time? I've no idea. There aren't usually many people about. Look, could you stop doing that? Sorry, Colin, am I bothering you? Yes. As a matter of fact, and it's Mr Cochran, if you don't mind. All right. Mr Cochran. So, here you are, running down the Byford Road until you get to the corner of Waterville Road at about what? 9.40? A bit later, 9.45. That's very precise. Well, I time it. That's rather the point. Absolutely. Now, as I understand it, normally you'd cut back across the green over Tucker's Lane and then home. But this time, you decide not to in case this unknown girl was waiting. Yes. So you go back to the school to pick up your car, hoping Mr Murray had fixed whatever was wrong with it in the meantime. Yes which presumably he has, because when you try it, it's fine. The point is, it's what? A five-minute drive to your house? About that, yes. Well, your neighbours say you didn't get back until after 10.30. Well, they're wrong. Well, they seem absolutely sure. It seems you make quite an entrance, screeching tyres and all that. Just as they were settling down to watch news now. Look, there are a couple of old neurotics. I... Yeah, well, I don't doubt that. But you see the problem here? It's what? Just under a mile from the school to your house. Now, I could walk that in ten minutes, and I'm not a world-class athlete. Which means, Mr. Cochrane, there's a missing half hour. Thank you. If this is about the Uspensky girl, you do realise this is only my second day. Oh, um, actually, it's about Mr. Cochrane. I hear you know him quite well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Colin got me the job, actually. And we met at college. Used to run together, though I was never in his league. What sort of a man is he? Well, he's not the sort to murder young girls. That's what you mean. Is he the sort to have an affair with one? <laughs> There's a question. Um, 
I very much doubt that. With this training schedule, I don't see how we'd ever fit it in. <laughs> if you see what I mean. And besides, he's only just got married. I was his best man. So you know Mrs. Cochran too? Yeah, of course. And how are things between them? Uh, yeah, look, I really don't feel comfortable discussing that. Okay. Are you uh, married yourself, by the way? No. Amazing, right? Mr. Cochrane says his car wouldn't start last night and he asked you to look at it. True? Uh, absolutely, yeah. In fact, I think I probably offered. I've always liked messing about with engines and I don't have one of my own to play with anymore. Lost my license. Demon booze. Sorry to hear that. Oh, I'd get on fine with my trusty push bike and, and fitter for it too. So what was the problem? Sorry? With the car. Oh, I couldn't tell you, I'm afraid. You weren't able to fix it? No, no, it was just I had some marking to do. By the time I finished it, it just completely slipped my mind. I've just had a call from Inspector Hill. Your friend Patrick says he never even looked at your car. No. No, he must have. Oh, you think he's lying? No. Well, I don't know. Maybe it was... Maybe it was a loose connection or something. Or maybe there was never anything wrong with it. Maybe it is just a convenient excuse. For what? For getting home late last night while you were taking your girlfriend for a little drive. That's outrageous. You've got no evidence for that. Oh, yes, I have. I've got two eyewitnesses who say that they saw Natalie being picked up on Ash Road by a man in a dark blue Alfa Romeo. Does that sound familiar? So? So what? I mean, there must be, there must be, there must be hundreds of cars like that. Do you know what I think, Mr. Cochrane? I think you never went for any run, or maybe a quick jog round the block, but then you got in your car, you picked Natalie up and you took her to the green for sex. And when she turned nasty and threatened to tell your wife, you killed her. Now you're mad. Are you willing to give us a blood sample? No. No. Why the bloody hell should I? In that case, Mr. Cochran, I'm arresting you. Uh, 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 I want to speak to Erica. I, I, I demand to speak to my wife. Give him his call and lock him up. That's exactly how she left it. Thanks. I'll, I'll be downstairs. There seems to be rather a lot of policemen at your house, so I uh, thought you might want to see a friendly face. Or of this kind. Did you get off on this place? Luckily, it fell through. So, how are things? Oh, you know, I've only just discovered my husband's an adulterous pig, and now he's been arrested for murder. Hunky dory. Hi. You um, must be Hannah. I'm Judy. I'm with the police. This must be terrible for you. You and your sister close. Half oh, sister. You know, yeah, I, I suppose. But she, she was ten months older than me, so... <laughs> what, did I say something funny? No, just when you get to my age, ten months doesn't seem that much, that's all. What are you doing? Looking for some letters. I can't seem to get into it. Oh, well, of course, I have a password here. Hmm. Brilliant, thanks. What 
sorted letters. Well, um, you think Natalie was seeing someone? Do you know anything about that? She had lots of boys. This wasn't a boy, Hannah. Well, you think she was seeing a married man? Maybe a teacher? She never said. Sure? Did she ever mention Mr Cochran? Colin? You think she was writing to Colin? Could she have been? No. Never. Never in a million years. He's just not like that. What is he like? He's... nice. That's all. Is he in trouble? Not if he didn't do anything wrong. People get punished for things they didn't do. They do sometimes, yeah. Hannah! See? No letters, just homework and that. Hannah! She, she wants to go and see Nat. Thanks. What makes me think that Colin was seeing Natalie? Screwing. Patrick, the word is screwing. And they've got what you might call documentary evidence. She'd been sending him letters for months. Oh, a prat. Another one? Mm. Bugger it. No, go in the DNA song. Nah. What do you think she used the condom? Right. No trace of any letters on Natalie's computer. At least not on the hard disk. She could have kept them on a floppy, but I couldn't find anything. What? No diary? Well, if there was one, it was probably in the bag. Maybe that was the reason why it was taken. Had a word with the sister Hannah. She's definite Cochran wasn't the boyfriend. But I wouldn't take her word as gospel. If you ask me, she's got a crush on him herself. Well, there's our motive then. Sibling rivalry. I take it Cochrane's still denying everything. Yeah, usual outraged innocence. However, forensics have found a hair sample in the car which may match Natalie's. And Tom, you've had another sighting. Yeah, Mrs. Aileen Pierce phoned traffic last night. Reckon she was driving home at about 9.45 when a dark Alfa Romeo came screaming out of Tucker's Lane, nearly sideswiped her. Well, that fits. Mrs. Cochrane said she saw Natalie at 9.40. He must have just dropped her off. Maybe he saw the wife coming. That's why he's in such a hurry. Come on, he's a local hero. It's not Colin's fault that some daft girl gets a crush on him. Occupational hazard, isn't it? A few letters don't prove anything. You haven't read them. Right, and as for this, this extra training that he's been putting in, he said himself he wants to move up to the longer distances. Let's face it, it can be a bit obsessive. Patrick, we have been married 11 weeks. This past month, he's barely touched me. Mrs Cochran. Sue Dunn, Stansgate Herald. The Met, was it? Were you and the boss? Work together. Good while ago, eh? Ten years. Did you ever meet his wife? Once. Ball breaker, was she? Any reason why she should be? Just asking. Good looking woman, I heard. From who? The daughter takes after her. Lucy. Lucy. Hmm. She picked him up here once. Uh, she just passed her driving test. <laughs> Have you Cochrane family snapshots and a copy of Lolita? Is that what we could come up with? Scared me. What did you tell her, Kim? Who? That woman copper. Oh, I just told her the truth, didn't I? Oh, you idiot. They think Colin was doing it with Nat now. He could lose his job and everything. Well, what could I do? I mean, come on, I know you fancy him. This isn't a game, is it? It's murder. It wasn't him. I know it wasn't. How can you? It was something Nat told me, all right? Look, Kim, you have got to swear on the Bible that you won't tell anyone. Huh? 
Hi, Michael. It's me. I just wanted to see if you were home yet. I've been thinking about this letter. All this wild animal in a cage, longing in my heart stuff. It's like something out of some slushy novel. Sorry? So it's just not Natalie, is it? What? I've seen her room. There's not a book in there. Hang on. That letter is the only link we've got between the victim and our chief sus... Uh, your chief suspect. And now you're telling me you don't believe she wrote it? You build a case from the evidence, never the other way around. Who taught me that? I can't believe you did it. What? Had an affair. Got divorced. After everything you said to me. Jude, you did what you did and I did what I did, all right? Now, if you don't mind, I'm going home. So you're still seeing her? Who? The woman you had the affair with. Thanks, well, are you? No. I'm Bill Bingham. Police investigating the murder of schoolgirl Natalie Ospensky have again appealed for anyone who was in the vicinity of Ash Road Green on Wednesday night to come forward. In the statement just released, Detective Chief Inspector Daniel Lloyd said they need to find a black leather shoulder bag known to have been in the victim's possession at the time of the attack. Anyone with information should call. Night, love. Morning, George. Lloyd. Seen this? Oh, God. Real stitch-up job, ain't eh? Well, how the hell did they get the stuff about the letters? It's gotta be the wife, isn't it? Yeah, but who put them on to her? I reckon it could be one of our lot. They think they're gonna bloody regret it. Listen, see if you can get hold of the editor of this rag and try and find out their source. Oh, I can but try. Morning, Lloyd. Morning. Have you seen? I've seen it. What have we got, Trish? Lab report on Natalie's shoes. We found two sets of prints, hers and someone else's. Probably male, but definitely not Cochrane. Damn. Nothing on his tracksuit, no fibres or traces on her uniform. What about the hair they found in the car? Oh, apparently they're waiting on the spare part for their comparison microscope. Oh, give me a break. What on earth possessed you, Erica? It was this journalist woman she just ambushed me i didn't have time to think i warn you the board of governors may not be so understanding thank you oh my god i'll call you back hi your mum said I'd find you here. Shouldn't you be at school? You'll have to go back sometime, you know. 
There's been another anonymous letter to Mr. Cochrane. You know what it means, don't you? That it wasn't that. So her and Colin weren't. Exactly. Well, that's what I said. Did you write those letters, Hannah? Did you? Yeah. I never meant to get anyone in trouble. All right. But in the letter it said you'd be on the green on Wednesday night, were you? No. Were you there, Hannah? If you saw something, if you're covering up for somebody... I wasn't, I swear. If you... I don't know, if you're scared of someone. Oh, my God. Is that it? Has someone scared you? Stay there. Mr. Murray! Inspector Hill. Hiya. What are you doing here? I had a free period. Thought I'd come and see if Hannah wanted a chat, you know. I thought you hardly knew her. Well, yeah, but she's in my class. Well, I don't think she wants a chat. I think she's scared stiff of you. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Why should she be? I don't know. Why don't we ask her? It might not be so easy. Look, it's uh, taken me a lot longer to get him than I thought. We should be getting back. So. Well, Mr. Cochrane, we've got a witness who seems to confirm your alibi. A taxi driver says he saw you out running and recognised your photo from the paper. Is that it, then? I can go. Well, no, not quite. I still want to know why it took you over half an hour to run the mile from Waterville Road. I'd rather not discuss it. You'd rather not? Let me explain something to you. You were seen at 9.45 on Beach Street. Now, that proves you couldn't have been driving out of Tucker's Lane at the same time. What it certainly does not prove is that you weren't waiting in the adventure playground for Natalie. Now, you could have easily have run across the green in that time. <laughs> What's the joke? I'm sorry. <laughs> run across the green. <clears throat> I couldn't have crawled it. What are you talking about? I broke down, didn't I? I hit the wall, whatever you want to call it. Go on. Look, it... It's just like I told you. All right. I knew I didn't have the pace for the 1500 anymore, and I've been trying to move up to the longer distances. Maybe I've been overdoing it. Anyway, when I got to the close, I remembered the letter. And I didn't want to meet this girl, whoever she was, so I decided to run back to the school. And as you keep saying, it's only a mile. So I decided to make a sprint of it. And as I got to Beach Street, I just fell apart. My legs went. I couldn't breathe. I must have blacked out because the next thing I remember, I was lying on the verge and... I... I'd vomited all over my clothes. I walked very slowly back to the car, drove home, shoved my gear into the washing machine, got under the shower, and then this appalling nightmare started. This is a murder inquiry. You're telling me you lied to us. I never lied. You withheld vital information then because you were upset about your running career? I told you you wouldn't understand. Then I don't suppose you've ever been good. I mean, really good. At anything in your whole life, have you? So how could you possibly understand how this feels? Thank you for your help, Mr. Cochrane.
Do you believe him? Silliest bloody thing I've ever heard. It must be true. So who was driving his car? Unless Forensic came up with something, we don't even know if it was his car, do we? Hannah's got a mobile phone. I saw her use it. All the kids have these days. Yeah, but if one sister's got one, then the other one. Natalie one's... would have one too. Get onto her mother, find out the number, what network she was on, and get somebody to turn the phone records over. Um, look about yesterday. Have you got time for a spot of lunch? According to George's contact at the Herald, it was Patrick Murray who put them onto Erica. I thought Cochrane and Murray are supposed to be best mates. Exactly. So why would he do that? Let's get him in and ask him. I'll finish for lunch first. You knew I was coming. You must have wondered. You must have thought what the situation was going to be like. I tried not to. You were hoping I'd still be single, weren't you? Yeah. So how long did it last, this affair? It didn't. So if you were hoping I'd still be single and this affair, this woman, didn't last, why didn't you contact me when you got divorced? I just cocked it up, all right? Cocked everything up. Danny, that is not an answer. That is a whinge. The whole reason our relationship, the, the whole reason we didn't do anything about it was because you said it would destroy your marriage and you couldn't do that. And then you just go off and... Uh, it didn't mean anything to me, all right? So I slept with her. You did. You still do. I felt more guilty towards you than I did to my own bloody wife. I was just a mess. I didn't want you to see me like that, that's all. Is that an answer? So, why don't you tell me all about your perfect husband so I can die happy? Come on. Come on. Hey, it's Nat. Leave me a message and I might get back to Unbelievable, eh? What they throw away the bloody key. You mean you haven't heard? What? Well, they've only let him go, haven't they? They what? Yeah, they released him. It was on the radio. Oh, God, why aren't you there? Listen, 
I've been thinking about what you were saying and it could be really important, couldn't it? Look, I'm sorry, I know I promised, but I really think I've got to tell someone. Get out of here! Get out of here, you bastard! Just get in! Get out of here! What do you want? Right, you've had your moment of glory, now go home. Pervert! Kill my daughter! No, he didn't. He was questioned and released, and now he's entitled to be left alone. What are you gonna do? Rest me? If you like. Come on. Come on. Mr. Corcoran! Yes. Oh, sorry, sir. I was looking for Miss King. Uh, it's Kim, right? Hannah's friend. Yeah, I'm afraid uh, Miss King's left. Will I do? Um, I don't know. It's it's about Natalie. Then I think you should uh, definitely tell me. Um, maybe you could. So, what's the problem? Well, it's something Hannah said. The police think that Mr Cochrane was, well, having an affair with Nat. But he can't have been. According to the papers, she was writing him letters, wasn't she? It wasn't Nat, it was Hannah. It was just a game. But that's not all. You see... Nat told Hannah that the man she was going with didn't know she was only 15. Didn't even know she was still at school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what conclusion do you draw from that? Well, it can't have been Mr Cochrane then, can it? Or anyone else in the school. Unless it was someone... you. Actually, no, I'm gonna try Natalie's number one last time. You go on ahead. Smashed over the head and left for dead. Looks like she's been here all night. Her parents reported her missing early this morning. I interviewed her. She was Natalie's best friend. 24 Hopley Drive. That's uh, just over there, sir. Yeah, thank you. I know where it is. It's only a couple of hundred yards from home. That's all I meant. <sighs> you alright? How can we let this happen? It happened. We didn't let it. Right, she's obviously on her way home from school. Get round there, find out what time she left and with who. It's Saturday, no one will be there. 
Well, then take some of this bunch and get working the phones. We've got home phone numbers for the staff, haven't we? Come on, Tom! So? Thank you. What is it? Looks like a piece of my gold chain. It's probably broken the attack. She's had this locket thing. I remember she used to fiddle with it. Yeah, so where is it now? Tom! Tell the suckers I want to search the whole area. Come on, you heard him. Boss! I thought you'd want to see this right away. It's Natalie's phone records. I mean, I've only had a quick look, but one number keeps popping up. Who's it belong to? A uh, bloke called Patrick Murray. He's a tip. We know him, yeah. Tom, leave that. Patrick Murray. Go fetch. You come with me. Colin? Oh, my God. Colin! You've been drinking. You never drink. Erica. What happened to your things? They're gone. It's all gone. It's finished. Are you all right? Yeah. Oh, Colin, I am so no, it's sorry. All, it's I should have believed you. It's all finished. Now, listen, listen, listen to me. That other night on the green, I lied about that. Sit. He's been cautioned. I don't think my sergeant likes you very much. I presume you've got some sort of evidence. That I was with Natalie, I mean. Oh, yeah. Well, apart from anything else, we found some fingerprints on Natalie's shoes which should match nicely with yours. Oh, God. Damn shoes. All right. I, I had a relationship with Natalie, but I had no idea she was underage, and believe me, she was more than willing. I met her in a club in town in uh, mid-August. I'd only just moved in. I swear to you, I had no idea of her age. She told me she was 17, and I had no reason to question it. As far as I was concerned, she was an attractive young woman who knew how to enjoy herself. She made all the running, I just went along for the ride. First day of term at lunch when I, um, when I saw her in a school uniform. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know what to do. Uh, but she didn't say anything, so I, I just played along. And then Mr. Cochran asked you to look at his car. Yeah, yeah, it was nothing. It was uh, damp spark plugs. Took me all of a minute, you know. But I thought I'd better take it around the block, check there was nothing else wrong. And that's when I saw Natalie waiting at the bus stop. It seemed like a perfect opportunity. I bet. I mean, I mean to talk, to tell her I'd have to stop. But I was just going to drive her home, that's all. But you didn't, did you? It was Natalie who suggested we went to the green. And I don't know, one thing just led to another. I admit, I've never had much willpower, but it was her idea. She made all the moves. I definitely didn't kill her. And I've got a witness that can prove that. Let's see what we've got. Come on, get it open. All right. So you took her to the green and had sex with her, knowing she was underage? Yeah, well, it wasn't the first time, was it? Ah, it was just a big joke to her. And afterwards, I couldn't believe that I'd been so stupid. I was panicking about being seen and she was teasing me, you know, taking ages to get dressed and pretending that she'd lost her knickers and all that. And then she found this, uh, this can of deodorant started spraying it around. 
like a water pistol. Anyhow, uh, I finally managed to get out of the car, and all of a sudden there's this bloody great dog running down the hill with Erica right behind it. Well, you can imagine she was the last person I wanted to see. So you drove off and left Natalie standing there? Yeah. Did Mrs. Cochran see you? Well, she would have seen the car. She could hardly have missed it. She would naturally have assumed it was her husband driving, wouldn't she? Yeah. And of course that suited you just fine. I drove back to the school, parked up, and that was when I realised that she'd left her bag and shoes on the back seat. And what could I have done? Colin could have turned up any minute, so I put them in my saddlebag and rode like the clappers back to the green. No, Natalie. So you left the shoes on the off chance you might come back for them? <laughs> I didn't want to walk around barefoot, did I? And I couldn't leave the bag, it had valuables in it, so I took it home. I thought I'd try and find a way of getting it back to her the next day. But instead you dumped it in a bin. Why? She was dead by then, wasn't she? There was a murder investigation going on. What would you have done? What about this so-called witness? That was when I was taking the shoes back. Um, I heard a noise, looked up, and there was that damn girl in the bushes watching me. What girl? Uh, I, I didn't know who it was then. They looked the same in school uniform. Uh, but, but later on, I worked out that it was Hannah Uspensky, Natalie's stepsister. That's why I was trying to talk to her. I wanted to persuade her not to say anything. Well, as it stands now, she's the only one that can prove my innocence, isn't she? then Hannah I'm sorry Except he's telling the truth. We need to talk to Erica Cochran. What, you think she's a suspect? Well, she didn't tell us about seeing Colin's car, so what else is she lying about? And more to the point, we know she was on the green with a girl who she had every reason to believe was screwing her husband. That's got to be a hell of a motive. 
Yeah, but I just... Look, let's just bring her in and talk to her, OK? And you better find Hannah. OK. Where are we going? My flat. I thought you lived with Colin. <laughs> what were you arguing about with your mother? You know, nothing. She's always picking on me because I'm the youngest. It's not fair. It, it's nice, this car. On. Your wife here, Mr. Cochrane. No, she's not here. She's not here. Where is she? Oh, her flat, I suppose. <phone rings> what she was talking about, some girl. And... Lloyd. Lloyd? It's me. I'm over at the Spensky's house. Erica Cochrane took Hannah 20 minutes ago. We mean took her. We just drove up and snatched her off the street, so her mum says. Jesus. This flat of your wife's, where is it? Uh, it'll be drive number seven. It'll be drive number seven. Flat one. Flat one. Quick as you can. Okay, you'll be there. Hello? Hi, Sherry. Hi, you good girl. What's the matter? Not afraid of dogs, are you? Your sister seemed to like her. Come on, then. Out we go. You wrote those filthy letters, not Natalie, didn't you? Didn't you? Don't fiddle with those things, please. Why? We all have fantasies. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Why write to him? Tell me the truth. Look, I knew you'd find the letters, because well, you do the mail, don't you? You wanted me to find them. Yeah, I, I suppose. Why, Hannah? Because I love him, don't I? You love him? I have always loved him. I thought that maybe if you knew there was someone else, well, then you wouldn't marry him. I just didn't want you to marry him, OK? And after we were married? Oh, my God. You were still trying to split us up. Look, I I'm, I'm really sorry, OK? It was you. This whole horrible, bloody nightmare was you. I've said I'm sorry. You're sorry? You're sorry? Have you any idea what you've done? I said!
I'd ruined her life and trying to bang my head against the wall. And she actually told you she was going to kill you? Yeah. And she actually admitted to killing Natalie? Did she say how? She said that she strangled her. And that she was going to kill me the same way. What about Kim? Did she mention Kim? Um, I can't really remember. It's, it's, it's all so confused. Where is Kim? Why did she have Kim's locket? I want to talk to her. I'm afraid you can't, Anna. Oh, my God. She's dead, isn't she? Knew it. She killed Kim too. It's alright. It's alright. Kim Walters is still unconscious. Why then? Why did Erica try and kill Kim? She was Hannah's friend. She knew about the letters. Erica was consumed with jealousy. Who knows? What's the problem, Jude? Well, it's just that two people went into that flat and one of them's dead. And we're assuming that Erica is the killer. <sighs> Lloyd, it was hot. Remember how hot it was last Wednesday night? Sorry. Right, where's the box of Natalie's stuff in? Tom's got it. Uh... Look. You said we didn't have a shred of evidence. Well, that's exactly what we have got. Tights. My God. So, do we get another cracker? Right, get Hannah in here. Formal interview this time. I don't want to talk with Mr Murray. I don't get her. Yeah. Still don't get it. Now, um... Earlier, you told us that... while you were waiting for Colin on the green, you saw Mrs Cochran, Erica, speak with Natalie just after the car drove off. Nice and clear, please, for the tape. Sorry. Yes. All right? Lovely. And then you saw Natalie walk towards the adventure playground and Erica followed her. Yeah. Now, to be absolutely clear, you didn't go to the adventure playground yourself and you never saw the body. No. It's okay, you're doing fine. Now, uh, moving on to Erica's flat. She said 
that she was going to kill you just like she killed Natalie. Yeah. And she told you how she killed Natalie. We have been through all this. Just bear with us, please. She said she strangled her with... with her tights. Erica's tights? No, with her own tights. Natalie's tights. She knocked her out, pulled off her tights, and then she strangled her with them. Yeah, I mean, that's the only way you could possibly know that. And Erica telling you, I mean, because you never saw the body. No. Well, there's just one problem with that, Hannah. Natalie wasn't wearing any tights. It was a hot night, she took them off and put them in her bag. They were still there when we found the bag. Well, say something. You used your own tights, didn't you, Hannah? You thought no one would notice. Because one pair of dark blue tights looks much like another, doesn't it? Hannah? It's not true. Tell them it's not true. You'd never do that. Not your own sister. She wasn't my sister. She was never my sister. Oh, God. Oh, my oh, stop God. It. What are you crying for? She hated you both. Don't you know that? She hated you! waiting for Colin and then this car pulled up and I thought I really thought that it wasn't him no it was Natalie and Patrick Murray wasn't it what happened then I just stood and watched them you know, doing it in the car. And then after Erica left, I followed Nat to the playground. We had a row. I pushed her. She hit her head. Then I strangled her. Why, Anna? Why did you kill her? She laughed at me. Go on. She asked how I knew she'd be there. Said I must have been spying on her. I said I wasn't. I was waiting for Colin. I had a date with him, actually. And that's when she laughed at you? She was always laughing at me. Trying to make me feel small. So you killed her? Not laughing now, is she? And she's a psycho case, that boss. What legally, you mean? Just leave that to the so called experts to fight it out of the court. But she planted the locket on Erica, right? And she tried to kill Kim to stop her talking to Murray, not realizing that Kim already had. Well, I can't get my head around this. It was Erica who took her to the flat. 
Well, Hannah didn't sit down and plan it all. I mean, you don't, do you? Not when you're 15, you act on impulse. Erica just gave her an opportunity. She'll make it. Come, Walter. That's good news. Is it fancy a drink? Yeah. I think we need one. I knew it really, I think. Just didn't want to believe it. She was so young. I wanted her to be innocent. <laughs> Never stop wanting them to be innocent. Drink? No, thanks. I'd better be going. Back to hubby. Don't talk about him like that. Hey. <laughs> Bye. See you later. Hey, tell me, Cassie, you got? Jude. Michael. Do you love him? Yes. He makes you happy? Yes. Does he? Yes. Luther Joyce is best remembered as feisty, sex-mad Mildred Roper, but behind the screen image was an intensely private woman, as we discover in 20 minutes after the ITV News at 10. ITV Drama.